Welcome to my home away from home. Our observatory that we constructed last year, uh, basically starting in May and finishing or having our grand opening on 15th of December 2007. And boy, let me tell you, it's been a learning experience since then, trying to get everything situated to where it's reliable and don't have any... We wanted this observatory to be uh, family friendly and obviously with some of the creature comforts that we have here uh, for the kids and for my wife while well, she's uh, waiting for me to finish up my observing maybe they'd be down here sleeping uh, we actually have connections for the Wii which is not here right now and uh, plenty of space for the kids to kind of hang out and roam. My wife and I actually designed uh, every inch of this observatory and I did all the electrical wiring in it um, which was rather challenging I even did the electrical service coming from the uh, the utility company. All the pictures in here were uh, public shots that were uh, taken from the Hubble and something that uh, we chose to utilize to try to decorate the observatory. We're not actually finished yet. We do have a number of things that we want to put in here. Um, we're, what we're looking at right now where this uh, window is is going to be knocked out in the near future to be the kitchen area. It's actually going to be the doorway to the kitchen and over there once you get through that doorway to the right will be the uh, bedroom area and then standing behind me um, right here in this wall actually right in the spot that we're looking at dead center right there is a uh, pre-framed door it's already got the door frame ready to go all we got to do is knock out the drywall that was always intention to uh, to be the restroom area so that's what we're going to do here hopefully in the next couple of weeks or so uh, up here of course is the observatory room and that's what we'll go take a look at right now the observatory was actually going to start and have an extra door right here along this wall. Uh, and it didn't prove to be feasible because of the height of the pier. Uh, again, we did all the electrical in here, which of course is red lights and, and uh, what's called deep sky paint. Um, nice stairway built by Mr. Henry Ramirez. Did a great job on it. Still touching up some paint. That's why we got some things off here. Here's our storage area, which uh, because of the way it looks, we'll go ahead and stay out of there this time. Um, let's go on up the stairs here so we can take a look at the actual observatory area. Um, this again was designed um, primarily by me and of course uh, my wife and even son and, and older brother having some input in it as well as far as the uh, choice of height. We actually almost made a very severe mistake if you'll notice that the pier uh, was originally cast uh, to be at this height and the, uh, the cast of the pier of course was not high enough so we had to in the early pictures of the observatory, you'll see that there's the, the pier with these really, really tall screws that, on the bolts, that were actually these bolts right here that I had to cut down uh, to shorten the pier and eliminate vibration. We decided to go ahead and, and cast the cement all the way up after we, of course, had mounted the scope, which was not a lot of fun, but, uh, you know, an easy way to make sure that you got what you need because, of course, we before we were seriously under height, it made it real difficult to uh, really see anything down low. Not that you really want to, but there's always that convenience. Um, this computer is actually networked both into here and into, uh, of course, on the telescope. Uh, the monitor is not only slaved for here, but also along this wall right here. Uh, that's the antenna for the, uh, the TV out front. And, of course, this computer can also control everything up front as well. Um, you probably didn't see the connections uh, on the one left hand side of the wall by where the kitchen area is going to go but there are connections for both video, audio and then a computer monitor as well. Um, this cabinet was actually made uh, by me that I wanted to use intentionally to observe with to kind of roll it around the pier but it, it wasn't really practical. It's got some nice drawers in it and everything serves the, uh, definitely serves the purpose but we decided to go ahead and just leave him there. Um, this is kind of where all the action happens for me. Uh, this dome right here that you see is an eight foot dome um, made by Polytank or Explore Dome. Uh, real nice people have done a great job. You know, it's a startup company or startup for astronomy anyway. And they've got a few bugs to work out, but they're, they're definitely working on them. Um, this is one of the first uh, automated systems to be online. Actually, I did a test market for them, but unfortunately I wasn't able to complete it because of uh, work obligations. But uh, this motor is incredible. I've got two, two of these motors. One of the controls the uh, upper door, and then one, of course, that controls the lower door. Uh, lower door, you wouldn't think that that door would be a problem to get open, but it actually is. It's quite a problem. Uh, just because of the awkwardness of the angle that it comes up, it requires a lot more torque on it than you'd think. 
uh, looking back over here at where my door actually comes up, you'll see secondary motor. This was actually a botched attempt to uh, get the upper door motor working. Just never did work right. And then, of course, this guy. This is something that I designed. It's based on a, an Explorer to design. But this is actually a windshield wiper motor, high torque motor. And of course with the appropriate slot on it. So we're going to take a look now and see how this stuff works together and actually get some video of it moving. A little noisy, but uh, definitely does the job. And it does it appropriately. Pulls it all, actually, all the way open. Uh, still got some kinks to work out on its bird's nest and on me, but we can go ahead and leave him like that. And then we'll check out this motor right here. This is actually the motor that, that uh, or the area that gave me the most frustration because, um, you know, this is an extremely difficult angle to pull off something like this, but this motor is actually able to handle it. I actually went through like three different motors trying to find the appropriate one to, to handle this job. And thankfully we can say that we've got one that'll work. And as you can see, not only does it work, but uh, opening it, popping it open, but it can also handle snapping it shut as well, uh, which is something that you're definitely going to want, especially if it starts raining, uh, to uh, abort mission and get everything going. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, fire up the rotation now so you guys can see how that works as well. You'll probably be able to see that this thing is going to skip a little bit. I uh, still haven't worked out the total dome rotation. And actually, this battery is actually pretty low. Um, I actually will be pretty surprised if it's able to complete uh, a full turn with it. Got some issues with the dome sticking. Um, we're still working on trying to get all those cleared up. And hope you guys enjoyed it.